I have to say, Chat GPT was a, was a point of inflection for everyone because it got the idea of generative AI. Got it. And then very same year, we became the global AI partner of the year for Microsoft. The ability of using AI mm-hmm. is far more important than seeing what AI is kind of cutting down. So I think my story has been that from India to the world, and there is no dearth of talent. When we go for a genuine implementation, think of how to put in production. Correct. And that is the question you should ask yourself every day. Correct. Because if that's not haunting, you know, if that's not giving you C plus nights, if that's not haunting you, Correct. then you are in a tough state because until it's in production, it's of no value to anyone. Correct. Not to me, not to me, my partner like Databricks. Correct. And to most importantly to my customer. Correct. Because they will never realize that value. Right? Or, and they will never enjoy the ROI of that solution. So my sincere request to all my customers would be think about what will it take to put in production from the basic infrastructure challenges of concurrency, number of number of uh, conference sessions, number of conference queries, number of uh, tokens that you will be able to process, the compute that you will use, the security around it, governance layer, think about it from day one because the overall Allen Blomet or creation is far too simple and then once you have it. Don't call it the end of the road. You got to keep tuning it, keep looking at the temperature control, keep looking at the top P values. So these are basic parameters. Correct, yeah. How you can how you maintain the quality of the outcomes that you get or generation that you get from the LLM. So it's a journey. It's not a target. It will continue. So I would say keep improving. Uh, do not forget the LLM ops, observability, DevOps, uh, governance, security. And most importantly, know why you're doing this. What is the ROI that you utilize? So I think three points will make it will make the difference. So in the last five years, our growth. If I talk about revenue, uh, we we've, we've touched. I would say we've been touching a triple digit CAGR. Okay. For the five years, got it. that's been a big number. We got funded by large private equity on the same uh, time period. Uh, we've grown from Jaipur to Noida to Pune to Hyderabad, Correct. and from there to about eleven more countries Correct, in yeah. the last two years. I have to say, ChatGPT was a was a point of inflection for everyone because it got the idea of generative AI. Got it. And then very same year, we became the global AI partner of the year for Microsoft, Correct, yeah. which was a super big deal because uh, everyone wanted that thing. And someone sitting in Jaipur Correct. in a tier two town in India and winning that Correct. was one of the extraordinary events Microsoft calls it right because they have never seen a partner coming from such a small town and yet delivering it to the scale. Correct. So I think my story has been that from India to the world. Absolutely right? yeah. And there is no dearth of talent in this country. Correct yeah. Specifically the fact that there are so many folks who have not got the chance Correct. of proving themselves. Correct. Sometimes I would meet someone who is very introvert Correct. but then is great code. Correct. Right? I would meet someone from very humble backgrounds. They, their personality, the way they would carry themselves would not be of, of, of a standard of someone let's say Mumbai Correct. so to bring them up to up to speed up to a, 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 a competition where they are actually judged for their work and not for the things Correct. is where we really focused on so we got a lot of people who are from the tier 4 or tier 5 towns in the other, of India mm-hmm. and who did not probably get got a, a very privileged let's say uh, primary education or very ordinary let's say government school tier 6 town, tier 5 town uh, government school education so we've been training people like those. Okay. I can tell you, they are amazing guys. I mean, there is no reason why the intellect remains with those who are privileged, right? Got it. it is with everyone. So we focus on that part, and because of that, I think uh, the kind of workforce we were able to create, and I'm using the word create and not just hire from the market, was the one primary pillar or fundamental pillar on which we stand today, which is creating talent. Absolutely. And and there is no there is no dearth of talent. You just have to nurture them. Give them that kind that of mentorship okay. and sometimes probably have patience. They might take time. It's like cycling. But once they learn to ride a cycle, then there's no stopping them. Okay. So that's how I think we've grown, especially with the workforce that is our fundamental pillar. Uh, second would be our focus on innovation. Yeah. We really focus on data and AI. I come from the background where I've okay. spent about a decade on AI, a real yeah. decade on AI. Okay. And I've seen how it has changed from 
being a good to have thing or a innovative thing to a must have thing, right? Okay. So that has really paid well, mm-hmm. and and now with data to specifically the kind of customer conversion conversions and conversations that we are having, mm-hmm. I think it's secondary to to learn because I think we've never never had such a momentum, okay. and we are breaking our own records in terms of acquiring customers, Correct. growing the revenues every month. We would break our own record, so that. Times are exciting. Got it. The budgets, of course, are not that open, so customers will not just throw their money. Correct. They are cautious, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I believe, there's a there's a huge upside to what we're doing. Okay. Um, I would still continue on the path of creating more talent. Got it. And ensuring that they become competent enough to work for any company in the world. See, I have stopped. Measuring it with a potential number for my future. Got it. Because I don't think there is. It's not a channel that has bandwidth. Correct. There yeah. are hundreds of channels. Correct. So there is there is a sea to go to explore, right? Correct. So I wouldn't say this is the number of miles I would go in the next five years. Correct. As much as I can, right? Correct. Um, scaling has its own challenges. I will not shy away from the fact that yeah. we're, we've struggled. We're still struggling with, of course, uh, trying to figure out how to. Cut down that struggle. Mm-hmm. I think that struggle is going to be there, even if you know we get more and more projects, more and more people. Mm-hmm. The way to scale is only you know focusing on your fundamentals. Mm-hmm. What do you stand on? So for us, our fundamental is you know uh, delivering the promise of intelligent enterprises, mm-hmm. which means ensuring that the organizations which are having these legacy systems, okay. deliberated softwares, ecosystems that are not compliant or are not ready to take these. Uh, GPTs and DBRXs and the mosaics of the world. How do we ensure they get this benefit, right? So that's where we, where we strongly play. Mm-hmm. So we we'll continue uh, on that path, and I think that ocean mm-hmm. is is big wide open for everyone. And hence, uh, how much can I travel in my boat, mm-hmm. or how long my voyage be? I would rather uh, look at if the potential of the boat is X. Okay. Am I consuming all of it or not? Right. Mm-hmm. So the potential of a of any individual to contribute is quantifiable. I would focus on that. Are we doing a full justice justice to that person's career and, and ability or not? So that's how I would manage it. I would probably look at it. Got it. So I mean, within the organization, <clears throat> it's me, Anupam, Correct. for the co-founders. Uh, we primarily work with uh, Maxim Azure and Databricks and AWS also recently. Got it. Um, and then we've got some, some ISC partnerships also, but primarily these three. Uh, in the last two years, we've acquired about 117 joint customers with okay. Databricks, okay. 117, uh-huh. uh, across India and across uh, across the world. Correct. And we've been talking to at least 80 more customers right now. So Got they are it. in the pipeline, right? Got and there's a huge, huge jump. Right. And then, uh, as a overall strength, we're about thousand two hundred, uh, you know, people practice of data we're about six hundred certified folks, which is one of the largest practices. Mm-hmm. Uh, we open for data uh, And in terms of the uh, the growth, we see, I would see if we are not able to maintain our double digit growth, mm-hmm. it would still be a very high double digit growth. Because right. as the base grows, of course, it's made up to maintain the, the same double digit number. But I think it's still waiting the order of seventies to eighties is right. where we look at. I am very proud of the fact that I mean, after we started, Correct. a lot of big fours, GSIs, smaller boutique players, they've all opened up their offices. Got it. I'm pretty sure there is a reason to it, right? Makes sense, yeah. So I'm very uh, proud of the fact that we were able to create an ecosystem. Got it. And I think every city, not just Jaipur, Got it. has a potential. We just need to have someone to kind of pivot or be the, the pivot of all of the ecosystem for tech in that city. So I think that's that's pretty dope. That's, I mean, and, and I'm seeing not just our local Indian SIs, mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of uh, foreign, uh, you know, setups opening up there. Mm-hmm. That means, let's say, a company in US Correct. setting up office in Jaipur Correct. with about, let's say, 100 developers. And that's great for the city and for the country because yeah. those positions were anyways then what does it reside with their uh, local entity wherever they are. So that means there's job creation incrementally in those tier 2 tier 3 space. I think, um, see, the opportunity is super large, right? Uh, let's start with the public sector. Correct. So yeah. look at, you know, there are multiple public sector companies that are really uh, 
manifesting their their entire innovation Correct. on AI. Correct. Yeah. Now, how is that possible? Correct. That's possible because they're seeing that adoption across the enterprises. Correct. So, huge potential lies with the public sector units, Correct. the S SOEs, and the the government owned entities. Correct. Right? Yeah. Uh, the other would be the enterprises. Enterprises globally or enterprises in India, they all have seen a huge uptake in the adoption of AI, mm -hmm. whether it's in the productivity, Correct. whether it's in, the, in their sales, Correct. whether it's in their optimization of their COGS, Correct. hence addition to the top line and the bottom line both. Correct. And hence, I think the the it's it's very it's very tough to really quantify what could be a potential number Correct. where we could go or grow uh, India as a country, right? Correct. But I still believe it's you know it's going to be a you know, a super big market as India touch that Correct. five trillion number. I think Correct. a huge play would come from AI, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but then the challenges are also equally big. Mm -hmm. Challenges of deep fake, challenges of right uh, irresponsible AI, mm -hmm. challenges of AI taking over some of the tasks that could cut down the workforce. I think on the first two, I do agree. We mm -hmm. got to work harder and create more standard data resiliences. Uh, when say data resilience, resilience uh, processes, it means that we do not let AI learn from the data that is that is very say, that that is probably of that is very sensitive in nature or it has some uh, importance that could lead to some kind of a dent in the mm -hmm. uh, country's uh, image or growth, whatever. Got but it. I think more importantly, what I feel is the ability of of using AI mm -hmm. is far more important than seeing what AI is kind of cutting down. So I would say AI will not cut jobs, mm -hmm. but it will cut the job for someone who is not using AI. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So there is a difference. So you can, of course, elevate what you are doing uh, for yourself in the organization by using AI, right? Correct. But refusing to say that it's of no value will probably you know, create that challenge, and Correct. eventually that person will be replaced, right? Correct. So, for example, contact center, right? Yeah. India is a hub for contact center. Yeah. So what we've done is we've built solutions that could automate a lot of processes in contact center so that you can serve more customers with the same engine, Correct. and hence. With your existing strength, you could go to more customers, Correct. not cut down your agents, Correct. right? So that's the difference. If the agent could solve a customer's query in less time, Correct. that's good for the agent, for the customer, for the call center company, and the ownership and the owner of that call center, right? Correct. So it's it's like it's like win-win for everyone. Correct. So to say that it would cut down jobs is actually a misnomer. Correct. It'll empower people to do better. Now, those who will still continue the way it used to be in the you know dilapidated world of Let's say the legacy technology. I think that will be a challenge. Right? That will be a challenge. I think, and overall, uh, from a overall good perspective, I think uh, it's as I said, it's going to be a there could be a very uh, you know uh, tangible impact of AI in our economy. Mm -hmm. I think that would start from some sections, maybe uh, the more tangible sections like industry, infrastructures, yeah, or railways or education. But I think when you go to the to the let's say grassroots level, healthcare Correct. or primary education. So education is different from primary, primary education. education yeah. And education for the for the for the for the village folks, for people who are who have Correct. no access to the right other quality of education. I think this could be a major, major impact. So it's here to stay, it's here to make impact, mm -hmm. but you got to take it in the right way. I think short term is to um, of course, grow and, and embrace more and more of AI Got within it. a solution and products. Got it. Long term solution would be how it impacts the larger business objectives. Got it. Right now, you know, some business objectives are not designed to accept AI as it exists today. Got we it. somehow mold it to kind of fit it into that ecosystem. Got it. But how would eventually we make AI a implicit part of our processes? That means, like for example, if we build a house, mm -hmm. we know the the pipelines, the plumbing work, right, yeah. has to be there. We don't think of it building explicitly. Correct. Yeah. Could we have a business environment processes that would have that kind of setup? It is, it is implicit that we we'll use AI, mm -hmm. and that would be the real realization. I think we're about five to ten years away from that space. Okay. Some market leaders would probably do that early, mm -hmm. okay. but then I think that's a long term vision. We will work with the larger enterprise mm -hmm. to let's say improve their existing processes by embedding AI in that from day one. And right. hence, when they do implement, let's say, if I'm talking about uh, logistics in an organization, mm -hmm. let's say 15% of my contribution of the cost of our logistics is actually to the COGS. Okay. What if I started 10% on day one? 
That means our bottom line. That means there's a larger play for the uh, the, for the customer to go and spend more. That means there more jobs. So it basically an impact like a value chain, right? right? Yeah. And that value chain will start from the fundamental, which is embedding AI in the very processes implicitly, and right. not calling it as an explicit process to improve or modernize the existing one.